Hi there, my name is Danger, and I just went through feminine facial... facial feminine... feminization of face surgery? Facial feminization surgery? Or feminized face surgery? <laughs> FFS! I've gone through FFS! So to get things started, 20 days ago, as of filming this video, I had facial feminization surgery. Uh, that entailed, uh, they lowered my hairline, and you can see the suture from that. They uh, reduced my brow, they gave me a rhinoplasty, they lifted my upper lip a little bit, and then from the inside of my mouth, they accessed the jawbone and they kind of smoothed it out a little bit, and they gave me a trachea shave. So what did all that feel like? What was the experience of getting FFS? Uh, I had mine done through Kaiser, through Oakland Kaiser. I live in the Bay Area. So uh, it's a pretty well integrated process. Uh, it all started over a year ago. I had to go to a therapist and I had to get recommendation to uh, the surgeon. They had to approve me to make sure that it's something I really wanted. Uh, I don't agree with this kind of gatekeeping, um, but it was a hoop I had to jump through. It was a very simple hoop. Though I did have to take some time off of work to make the appointments. Kaiser is very weird about when they allow these intake appointments, uh, which I don't like. It was specifically um, like noon on a Tuesday that they would only allow these appointments. So you can imagine that really impacted my workday. Um, but once I had the approval from the therapist, they referred me to the surgeon. In the Bay Area, there are two surgeons who work together. So you'll see them individually, but in the surgery room, they work together. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate because that really means they have a huge backlog of patients, but it means they can also control the quality and the procedure is very high quality. Um, they are training more people. They are just very behind because they were some of the first to offer this procedure in the area. Um, so I saw Dr. Shi, uh, and I'd like to commend him. I think he did a wonderful job. Uh, the entire process was very simple. Once I got approved from Kaiser and everything, and the ball got rolling, I had my consultation and I was put on a list for FFS, and then I, I would get my date. But they're so behind that I was put on a list to get on the list to get my date. So it had been over a year that I kind of forgot about it. I, I just assumed that they forgot about me and that it wasn't really an option and that there were just too many people in the system. And I got a call out of the blue just randomly like hey we've got your date for you how's how's december sound and i said that sounds wonderful i would love to do december uh so december rolls around uh, i'm really excited um, there's a number of things you have to do to get prepared you have to be off of hormones for I believe 10 days uh, there's pre-surgery prep and uh, they send you an information packet. I don't actually have that on hand. They send you an information packet with things you need to do 10 days prior. Uh, you don't shave, don't take your hormones. Uh, you're allowed to take spironolactone, uh, so I think most uh, androgen blockers are fine, but estrogen especially, they say, stay off of that for 10 days prior to the surgery. So it had it, December had rolled around, my surgery was really close, and then I get a phone call. Um, they're having a strike at Kaiser. And I am 100% I'm for uh, strikes and employees, um, workers working together to get better deals. And I, I fully support them, but it meant that my surgery was pushed back 30 more days. Uh, so it was, it was disappointing to me. Um, that meant that my plans, my recovery, the people who were going to be there to help me out, all had to shift things around, and it was a bit stressful. But January 10th rolled around, which was my next date, and everything went fine. I got into the hospital. Uh, they checked me in, they ask you a million questions, you meet like 900 different people, and they all introduce themselves, and you can't remember a single person's name, uh, and they finally wheeled me into the OR, and I was knocked out, unconscious. Uh, they did the procedure, it lasted about eight hours, and then I woke up in my hospital room. Uh, the feeling of waking up wasn't great. Uh, I guess we'll get into post-op now because pre-op was mostly just answering questions and then falling asleep and then sleeping through the entire procedure which is great i highly recommend sleeping through your facial surgery um the feeling waking up was intense um my eyes were swollen shut and my whole head 
was packed in ice. Uh, I th they call it an igloo. They put ice packs uh, literally all over my head. Um, my nose was swollen shut and also really bloody. Uh, my throat was incredibly sore from the breathing tubes they had in while I was being operated on. Uh, Basically, everything I relied on in my whole head was on fire or bleeding or in intense pain. Um, it was not fun. The first couple days, uh, I really regretted what I had done. I didn't realize that the scope of, of the pain and the, the, what the recovery would entail. Uh, I knew it would be hard, but experiencing it for yourself, not being able to really breathe that well, is kind of um, shocking, to say the least. Uh, a couple things that they did to make my recovery more enjoyable. They uh, kept the ice packs on me at all times, which was great. Uh, I highly recommend ice, real good stuff. Uh, and they also had one of those like dentist suction tubes. So uh, I was having real problems swallowing because of all the work they did in the throat. Uh, so being able to like suction it out and not have to swallow was, um, was great. I uh, highly recommend suction tubes, They're real nice. Uh, it took me a while to be able to swallow comfortably again, about two days, uh, and that that was probably the worst part of my recovery so far. Um, not being able to use my nose to breathe, and also feeling like I needed to swallow, like there was something in there and, and I couldn't really, was incredibly painful and very frustrating. Uh, and when it comes to pain in other areas, uh, my nose is still very sore and I think very swollen. Uh, definitely underneath it feels uh, much more uh, swollen uh, than it normally would feel. And it looks a little big too, but you know, that's just my good genes. Uh, and uh, the, currently the thing that's bothering me 20 days in uh, is still the sutures in my mouth, and there's still a lot of swelling on the sides here. Um, so recovery, uh, I guess we, we can get into questions now. Uh, so that's generally where I'm at. Um, the first question I got was about general healing time. Uh, it'll be months. It'll be months until everything's settled in and all the swelling is gone and I'll be able to just eat a pizza again. Uh, currently, my mouth is still very sore. I still have a lot of sutures. Eating is, is, is kind of a challenge. Um, but a lot of the pain has subsided. Uh, I still am in a lot of pain in the mornings. I still have to wear... Uh, post uh, seven days you can take the bandages off and then you only have to wrap up at night when you go to sleep uh, so you do little mummy wraps and keep the swelling down while you're while you're resting um, and that hurts a lot <laughs> getting that uh, they're getting those bandages off and feeling the the relief of all the, the parts of your face kind of settling back in uh, hurts a lot uh, the, I don't like the bandages uh, I'll need to keep doing them for a while more but I don't like them um, and then uh, cost. I have a question on cost. Um, I'm not a good uh, not a good person to answer that. Uh, I got very lucky. Uh, Kaiser considers it necessary care for trans patients, and so it's covered on my health insurance. And I also have excellent health insurance through my former employer. Um, so the cost for me was uh, zero. I have not paid a cent. I would have had to pay a $120 copay, but because my surgery got bumped, uh, they waived that, so I haven't paid a cent. Um, if you are shopping for health insurance and you are considering FFS, definitely look into if it's covered and how much of it's covered, and, and really you should consider that in your plans, because it can be very expensive. But if you have a, an insurance plan that covers it, uh, like mine did, like mine did, it would have just been like a hundred dollars, which isn't. It's not. It's a significant amount of money, but it's not the thousands that it could cost. Um, so please uh, do your research with your own insurance plan. Uh, ask questions if you're interested in FFS. Ask the questions. How much is this going to cost? Because uh, I can't. I, I can't answer that for you. Uh, and then. Uh, they asked about uh, general things they can and cannot do. Uh, as well, you should talk to your doctor about that. Uh, if you are looking for a specific thing done to your face, there are many considerations about what procedures you are, um, that they will do for you and that they can do for you. Uh, if they say, they, they also want to keep things in balance. So if they reduce your brow, but don't touch your nose, then your nose might look much bigger 
because previously while you had the, the larger brow, you know, it balanced it out. You, you had a brow and a nose that matched. So a, a good doctor will kind of look at your face as a whole and they'll say, well, you only came in here for a rhinoplasty, but I just want you to know that if I adjust your nose, then your brow is going to stick out. Or if we adjust your brow, then it's going to kind of elongate your jaw. And so you really want a doctor to consider all these things. So uh, what they can do is they can look at your face holistically and they can say, you know, what, what if we touch this part, what happens to the other part? Uh, what they cannot do, I would say that there are, there are a lot of procedures when it comes to brow reduction. Um, and depending on how your brow is constructed is how they approach what to do. Um, sometimes if you have a very thick brow bone, they can just peel the skin down and just shave it. Just like, a, just like you would like a woodworking project, just kind of work it down. Uh, if your brow is too thin for that, uh, that can potentially compromise the structure of your brow and sinuses. That could be a real problem. Uh, most people get the procedure where they literally separate the bone and they rework it off of your face and then they reset it a little bit higher up. Um, that has a much easier chance of being successful for everybody. Um, that's the procedure they used for me. And as you can see, there's no... There's like no scarring, nothing. You, you can't tell that they literally removed this section of bone off of my face. Um, so big plus there to Dr. Shi. Uh, um, let's go to the next set of questions. Um, how do you get FFS? How did I get this project started? Uh, well, I think I mentioned in the beginning, uh, you, in, in, Kaiser's, in Kaiser's case, because it's a covered procedure, um, I called the... Uh, I think I called the Oakland, Kaiser Oakland MST, the, the multi-specialty clinic. It's the, where they handle their uh, transgender services. And I said, I I'm interested in FFS. And they said, okay, we need to give you a therapist. And that's the first step. So they kind of walked me through that. So letting your medical provider or your doctor know this is something you want to do is exactly how you get things started. Because chances are they know the process better than anybody else and they can, they can kind of push you along. Um, how do you get it covered? Again, you really need to check your insurance. Um, will you ever be pretty? Uh, you're gorgeous now. I know you and you're gorgeous. Um, the, the results of FFS are, um, you're not going to have a radically different face. It's just going to kind of smooth out the rough edges. Um, so if you, if you like your face in general and you just want maybe a smoother nose, then FFS is right for you. Um, probably more extensive reconstruction can be done under the, the guise of FFS, and I would definitely look into that when you start talking to a doctor. Um, let's go to the next set of questions. Uh, do I have any num numbness still in areas? Um, definitely. Um, the, since they lowered my hairline, uh, from here to here is numb. I can't feel, I can't feel that. I can see it on camera, I cannot feel it. Uh, that will be present for months. Uh, the nerves will come back online. Um, they currently are a little bit. It starts to itch, and then I go to scratch it, and I can't can't scratch it. Um, that's a disconcerting thing. Um, and then in the mouth, I have really weird pockets of numbness and hypersensitivity. Um, so I'm like I'm hypersensitive here. It feels like electricity when I touch my lower lip, and um, there are certain areas of the lower jaw where it feels much more intense or much lighter than it should be. Just weird little pockets of nerves coming in and out and as well I'm, I'm still hypersensitive like on the nose in this area that they did some work on uh, but it will go away uh, I will not the, there's a very 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 low chance that I will not get feeling back uh, but for the most part it's it's almost guaranteed that I that my nerves come back online um, did it de did it decrease my dysphoria um, not yet um, because I'm still recovering, you know, there's still a lot of swelling in the area. Uh, there's still a lot of things that have to settle in. Uh, this isn't the final shape of my face. This is still lots of swelling. I can still feel it. It's not normal. Um, that will go down. So I think once, uh, once things settle in in a couple months, then I'll be able to answer that question. Um, it's a long-term solution. It's not a, it's not a quick fix. Although on my brow, uh, definitely right there, um, brings me a lot of joy. Uh, so I guess in that way it has eased my dysphoria, but my uh, my approach to my day hasn't changed. I still have long hair to hide my face, uh, but eventually I will be going long, uh, short hair and really showing off the good doctor's work. 
Uh, what specific kinds of things do they change about my face? Uh, I already went into the procedures earlier, so I think I answered that question a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, for the most part, I really wanted to kind of smooth out uh, this jawline because I had kind of a square jaw. I wanted to really smooth out the nose and I really wanted to, re to reduce this brow because I wanted people to be able to actually see if I wore my, I, my uh, eye makeup. I, I like makeup, I love makeup, but I couldn't really wear it because it was just hidden. And my, and my brows were like this. Everybody thought I had those intense swooning eyes all the time and it was really just me using my normal eyes to, to look. Um, uh, so I do have some general advice, and so we'll get into the general things. Um, for the first week, you're useless. You need to be able to rest, follow the doctor's instructions, and be taken care of. If you're planning on recovering on your own for FFS, I highly, highly recommend against that. You really need somebody there to support you. Uh, in my case, I had my girlfriends. They were wonderful. Uh, so much respect and love to them. They helped out a ton on this, and they're still helping. Um, do not handle this yourself. This is something you need support for. Um, even simple things like getting off the couch to get some pain pills is a monumental task when you are, um, when you are as, as, as broken as you will be for the first seven days. And even after that, your energy levels will be up and down. Um, it really helps to have somebody give a helping hand. Uh, so before you get FFS, make sure you have your support network in place. Make sure you're not alone if you don't want to be alone, especially in the hospital room. The first couple days, um, all I really had was like ice packs <laughs> to me uh, when I was alone late at night. It was uh, ice packs aren't great to talk to. And uh, when your eyes are swollen shut, when your nose is swollen shut, and when you can barely swallow, you kind of just don't want to be alone. So having that support in the hospital being able to wake up and see my girlfriend there was so important to my recovery, to my mental health. Because like I mentioned, I did regret what I had done. I did have moments where I thought like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? This is the worst decision you've ever made. Um, thankfully, I don't believe that anymore. That was just the pain talking, but uh, don't be alone. Have somebody help you out. Uh, keep an open communication line with your doctor and with your caretakers uh, because you will have a lot more questions once things get going. And I think that's my general advice. I can do a follow-up video and keep things a little shorter uh, next time. So if you have any more uh, specific questions, I would love to answer them. And I also like to do more progress videos. Um, so if this was interesting to you, please let me know. Other than that, I hope you have an amazing day and I hope I answered your questions.